British Army was actually one of the first nations to adopt the FNFAL, but they called their version the SLR. This firearm was a British licensed version of the famous FNFAL, Fusil Automatique Léger. However, it differed in a few interesting ways. First of all, it's built on inch pattern equipment, and then it also fired in the semi-automatic mode only, marking an important distinction between the UK version, L1A1, and the Belgian-produced FNFALs. This firearm equips UK troops through very troubled times, carrying them through the Cold War, through the troubles in Northern Ireland, through bush wars in Africa, and then perhaps most notably during the 1982 Falklands War. In my view, there are two noteworthy things about, about the British SLR, the, the fall. The first is that it demonstrated uh, real foresight and real courage on the part of British ordnance to adopt a gun that was not invented there. The Brits really uh, deserve plaudit for willing to overlook the nationality of a promising design. Uh, the second thing is that the British very wisely, uh, although the gun that was presented to them at FN was selective fire, the British took the view that the gun was more effective in semi-automatic only. It marked a major changing point for the Empire because prior to that they were armed with short magazine Lee Enfield rifles uh, made of wood and steel and then suddenly they transition in 1954 to the L1A1 SLR. And when they do so, they have transitioned to a firearm that has no wood on it at all. Although there were wood stock versions initially, the UK ultimately adopts a version with very nice pebble grain composite furniture. And the L1A1 was heavy at nine and a half pounds, feeding from the 20 round detachable box magazine, using Dudon Sev's very reliable, robust, and effective falling block locking mechanism. The rifle succeeded in every category, and it was in combat during the Falklands War that the image of UK soldiers on foot carrying their L1A1s came to represent a moment where a hiccup in decolonization briefly pitted the empire against a junta in Argentina. The SLR uh, was eventually replaced uh, by the L85 bullpup uh, as made by Royal Ordnance. And it's really a shame uh, that the FAL, uh, the, the free world's right arm, uh, a symbol of uh, standing up to uh, the tyranny of communism uh, was sort of just pushed off to a back burner for a, a modern looking uh, bullpup rifle. And when the British Army went to the desert for the first Gulf War, there are a lot of British soldiers that wish they'd had their SLRs. Most of the SLRs you see today, of course, are parts kits or assembled here in the United States. Getting an original British gun, pretty tricky. Anyhow, that's all the time that we have for this week. If you like this show and you're not an NRA member, you need to join right now. Go to AmericanRifleman.org. I'm Mark Keefe, and I'll see you next week right here on American Rifleman Television.